Hi students and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I'm streaming to you from beautiful Victoria here on the west coast of Canada also known as the Garden City because all of our beautiful flowers and trees that we have here. Welcome Carolina, our moderator. Everyone, this is a members chat class. That means only our channel members are able to chat, but of course everybody is able to watch. And we have these special classes every couple of weeks where we give our members chances to ask us questions and we provide answers for the IELTS exam for the different sections, the listening, the reading, the writing, and the speaking to help um, kind of reach those high IELTS band scores, even those uh, band nines. And of course, uh, members, if you have questions regarding English, English grammar, vocabulary, and even questions with uh, applications for immigration uh, to countries like Canada, or Australia uh, or questions with university applications where to go to university and so on you can even ask those questions we do have quite a bit of experience I've been uh, doing this for nearly 20 years now so I have a pretty good idea of what's going on um, students while we wait for some more fellow members to join in I see Baljeet and uh, Uche Chi is here um, I would like to show you where you can find a lot of great information to help you. This lesson is presented to you by aehelp.com, that's our academic IELTS web portal, as well as gieltshelp.com, that's our general IELTS uh, web portal. And on those uh, websites, you can get a lot of help uh, with your uh, questions as well. This is what our academic IELTS website looks like here. Um, and uh, you can join our premium package by clicking this big red button that's just above my head there. Um, as you can see, we are an official IELTS uh, test registration center um, and we are certified IELTS uh, agents. So you are in great hands with us. Uh, for general IELTS, it's the same idea. All you have to do is go to this website here. It's the green background. And again, click this red button right there. And you can see more of our members joining in the class. Welcome Cass, welcome me, hi Kyber. Again, once you uh, have access to our websites, you have a uh, My Student account that's up at the top here. Uh, we're going to be uh, using uh, some of our tools from our student account and uh, I want to show you um, where you can find a lot of answers to questions. So members, if you have access here, also pay attention, okay? Uh, so first of all, <clears throat> you have your uh, computer-based practice exams here. You have a fully interactive course uh, there. You have uh, exam books. There's six full paper-based practice exams. Um, you even have a study plan, and I strongly recommend using this 30 or 60 day uh, study plan uh, once you have access to the premium package. And then um, we have uh, lesson videos, tons and tons of help there. Uh, so check that out, and if you have questions, students, members, then uh, here are your tools up at the top. So um, right at the top here, you have a forum. Oh, that's a little bit thick. Um, let's try that one. So you have a forum here, and then you have a blog here, and then you have a contact us button here, okay? Uh, so there are three tools way up there above my head. Uh, where you can either uh, connect with us through the student forum where you can see that there are people asking uh, questions about uh, different topics so answers of the academic IELTS curriculum not found okay or whatever question you may have and then uh, also um, of course 
the blog where you can find vocabulary and tips for speaking and so on. Okay, so lots and lots of help there. All right, members, I hope uh, while I'm uh, chatting away here, showing you all these resources, you're thinking about some questions to ask me about your IELTS exam or your IELTS studies or your plans to study abroad. Okay, because we will get to that in just a moment. Okay, and of course, um, if you have uh, questions that don't come to mind during this class, uh, again, you can click this uh, contact us uh, button here, just above your edit your profile. And then uh, when you click on that one, um, you just send us an email, okay? Now, uh, even before that, we also have the uh, messenger chat here down at the bottom um, of the website but I'm covering that up with my body so you won't see that you can ask there too okay um, so no excuses for not getting answers to your questions students let's hop back here <clears throat> so uh, if you want to join our premium course which is a great idea then um, we do have this uh, discount code here, a pass IELTS for a 20% discount. So you can use that on those websites that I just showed you. And uh, if you have questions that you want to send by email, you can do that too. Uh, just send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. And of course, students, we've got tons and tons of live classes, so we will have an all chat class where everybody will be able to join the chat. That will be a speaking part one class coming up in about 80 minutes. Um, and then uh, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, there's no classes. Pay attention to that. That's usual for us. And Wednesday all the way to next Saturday, we'll have lots more live classes with speaking, writing, listening, reading. So. Uh, covering many sections of the IELTS exam. Now, let's get into some questions. Okay, um, so uh, Mi Yen is asking, what should I include in each topic, person, location of speaking? So I'm looking at uh, Mi Yen here, everyone. This is what Mi Yen is asking. That's just right above my head. Uh, what should I include in each topic? I'll copy that out because in case some of you are using mobile, um, then uh, that could be a little bit small to see. So let's make that a bit bigger. Okay, so let me make this clear for all of our viewers. This is uh, me that's asking this uh, question here. Uh, what should I include in all of the topics? Okay, so me, um, before I answer this, let me just clearly explain this to our, uh, our viewers. So part two speaking, cue card, will cover either a person, place, object, idea or event okay it will be one of those five or maybe a kind of a combination of two but it will focus mostly on one of those okay like talk about a place where you like to go with your friends for example or talk about a person you really admire um, or talk about an item uh, that you um, take with you uh, whenever you go out okay so it will be about one of these topics all right and so it, me is basically asking like you know what do we include because I know me has been paying attention to these classes and has realized that there's really kind of a logical um, order of information uh, to talk about any of these topics right okay so let's help out me here everyone because I think that many of our regular viewers that have seen a lot of these part two classes they're uh, pretty clear on these okay all right so um, the answer is uh, let's do this nice and fast so for a person uh, you want to talk about their appearance so what they look like um, and you want to talk about their personality backed up by their actions okay 
So for example, if I'm talking about a person I admire, uh, maybe I will talk about my supervising professor at university, um, Dr. Uh, Carr, who is a recognized uh, neuroscientist. Um, she is around 60 years old, has long dark hair, big round eyes, uh, usually wears a smile. She's extremely hardworking. She has been accredited with at least uh, four uh, major academic publications and has received numerous awards uh, recognizing her hard work and dedication. So that's appearance. You kind of get a picture of her and then followed by personality, so hardworking. And I back that up with what does it mean that she's hardworking? Okay, so that's actions. All right, uh, place. Um, so when you're talking about a place, uh, students, I'm gonna go over this pretty quick, me, because you asked a pretty big question, but it is a good one. Uh, can anybody help us out here? So if we're talking about a place, uh, what should we include? Okay. And I see lots of other questions coming uh, as well there, members, I see that. So I'm going to tackle those questions um, one after another and uh, in the order I see them and then make some connections when I see there's relevance among your questions. So let's help out me here a little bit. I know this is a question a lot of uh, people wonder about. So when you talk about a place, what should you consider? So what do you think about during that one to two minutes of speaking when you're answering the cue card and the question is about a place. So talk about a place you like to go to in the summer or uh, talk about a place where you do most of your learning. Um, okay, so there's lots of different questions. Okay, so Tatiana says, what is the place, the location, the description, the example? Okay. So, um, yeah, we want to talk about the location. So where is it, right? Location, uh, what else? Arminder says the size, the history, the attendees, okay? So we can talk about the location, the appearance, okay? Uh, places, uh, again, uh, it's physical, right? So you want to describe what it looks like. I do most of my learning at the University of Victoria. It's a large campus located in the heart of Victoria uh, that covers about 15 acres. It has roughly 20 different buildings, each one that can house about uh, 500 uh, students. The average height of the buildings is around five to six stories. Okay, so I start talking about the appearance. Then you're right, so we can talk about um, the attendees, so who goes there. Um, we can go about, talk about the activities, so what happens there, okay? So at the University of Victoria, students learn uh, met for many different types of degrees. Um, as well, there is a lot of research that is conducted there by professors and scientists, right? So what happens there? Activities um, and, um, of course, the history. Yeah, so you can talk about when it was established and so on. So that's place, okay? There's also event. Uh, when you're talking about an event, um, talk about uh, what it is. So description of the event, the time of the event, the location of the event, the attendees at the event, um, the um, and your personal, sorry, activities of the event, and your experience of the event. Okay, so that's event, all right? And you should talk about, kind of in this order, now me, I'm not going to give an example for all of these, otherwise we're going to be doing just this, okay? So an idea. Uh, talk about the origin of the idea, so where it, does it come from, okay? Uh, talk about uh, the requirements of the idea, so what is needed uh, for this idea, okay? Talk about the utility of this idea, so why is this idea useful, okay? Uh, talk about the outcomes of the idea. So when you implement this idea, what happens? And talk about potentially the improvements for the idea. So how can you improve on that idea, okay? So sometimes an IELTS cue card question will be like, talk about an idea 
you had to be healthier. And then you have to talk about an idea that you had to be healthier, like creating a diet plan. Where does it come from, right? All of um, these dangerous uh, viruses around the world, people getting sick, I decided to be healthier. What's needed, I need a certain amount of money each month, about $100 to pay for vitamins and special nutrition. What's the utility to boost my immune system? What's the outcome, I'm getting sick less often, how can I improve it? Well, I can also implement an exercise routine, right? So that's the idea, all right? Notice how quick I can be when I'm clear on these, okay? And then um, last uh, but not least in this case um, is an object, okay? Object is also physical. So notice how person, place, object, they all have this kind of physical uh, element to them. So uh, the uh, object, you should talk about its appearance. So what does it look like? Okay, uh, you should talk about its origin. Where does it come from? You should talk about its function. Um, how do you? How does? How is it used? Okay. Uh, you should talk about its usefulness. So why is it uh, valuable for you? How do you use it? Okay. Um, and your opinion about the object. Okay. So include all those. All right. Um, okay, everyone, so that's it in a nutshell. Uh, me, um, if you go to, because uh, that's really, really dense right there, okay? But uh, if you go to the website, you go to your My Student account at the top there, and then uh, you go to your full online course, this one here, me, okay? And you go to the uh, speaking section, Okay, I believe this one is in speaking part uh, C, maybe? You have to check it out. Um, these are sample dialogues, speaking interview. Uh, no, maybe speaking part uh, B. Let's check that one out. Yeah, there it is. Okay, all right. Um, so see right here, uh, me, in your full course, um, you have all of these with examples. So right here you have describing a person, uh, describing a place, describing an object. Uh, sorry, that's, you can't see that one because of my head. But anyway, there's describing an event. So um, they're all in here in your speaking section strategies, me, in your full course. Okay. All right, um, so uh, let's make a little bit uh, greater use of our uh, online um, resources here. And let's ask some questions, and I'm kind of hitting two birds with one stone here. Um, let's ask some questions, students, using the uh, student partner speaking. So I think many of you know how the student partner speaking works. So I want to give you a chance. I want to always, you know, make keep things exciting and do things a little bit differently um, and see how effective we can be. So, uh, and this is a good advice for IELTS as well. So don't be afraid to uh, try kind of new uh, approaches or new strategies, okay? So I want to try to give you a chance to ask me some of your questions verbally, not just in the uh, written form like we just did, okay? So, and I know that a lot of you can connect, like uh, I think Baljeet has the next question as well. So log into your um, student accounts, everyone, and then go to your uh, student partner speaking, okay? And um, ask me a question there. I actually see that some of our members are already in there. So I see Hasna is in here and Cassandra is already in here as well, okay? Uh, so, um, yeah, so let's so just verbally ask me some questions. So I don't know if Cassandra has a question on her mind already, but since you're in here, Cassandra, you can absolutely ask me a question if you like by pinging me, okay? 
um, Tatiana, I can see, just joined up. So if you have a question, uh, ping me with the with the blue envelope. So click on the blue envelope and then say, hey, Adrian, I got a question. Can you answer this question for me? And then I'll do my best, okay? All right. So let me see what we have in the chat here. Okay, Cassandra's there. All right. So uh, let me see. Yeah, so there's Cassandra. So Cassandra says, may I ask you a question? Sure, Cassandra. Let me reach out to you. Hello. Hi, Cassandra. Hello. How are you, Adrian? I'm doing great, thank you. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing great as well. That's good. That's good. Healthy? Are you enjoying the weekend so far? Um, yes, I'm enjoying. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm stuck here at, uh, inside. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so it sounds like you have a question. Uh, go ahead. Um, ask me uh, what you whatever you'd like, and then I'll do my best to give you a good answer. Okay. Okay. Um, a while ago, I have my speaking practice with my partner, and then. Uh, and then suddenly I asked her to clarify something about like it's like um, uh, is it okay for to clarify a question to an examiner uh, if it's like a general question like uh, for example uh, what stories do I like to hear could, could I, it will it, it can affect my score it will be like it will have a bad a negative effect in my score Okay, uh, before I answer you, I want to be 100% clear um, that I'm uh, answering the right question. So do you mean like, um, can you ask the examiner to clarify the question further? Yes, it like, uh, it's like kind of big, like uh, what's, if for example, what stories do I like to hear? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, it's, a, it's a good question, um, Cassandra. Uh, you can, but they will only repeat the question. Okay, so um, they can't give you further detail and they can't um, paraphrase the question. If they're doing that, they're actually doing something that they shouldn't be. So their instructions and, you know, as we've said often, like we do have a very direct connection with um, British Council and we speak with them and we ask them these questions because we're curious as well. We get these questions often. Um, the instructions for the examiners is that they're allowed to repeat a question but they're not allowed to paraphrase and they're not allowed to give more details regarding the question. So you simply just have to answer that question. So if, uh, for example, the question is what you just said, like uh, what stories do you like to hear? Then you just have to do your best to interpret that question, like uh, what genres of stories and then, um, and then give that answer. So for example, you would say something like, well, I really like uh, listening uh, to uh, stories about vacations that my friends have uh, gone on in the past. Um, I had a really good sit down chat uh, with uh, my friend Sarah the other day and she told me all about her trip to Hawaii. I love these stories because um, it makes me excited to go on adventures in the future myself. And then that's your answer and then you keep going. The reason that they can't paraphrase the reason that they can't give you more details is because those questions obviously they ask from other students as well so they have to um, have validity and reliability in their marking and if they paraphrase or if they give details that changes the reliability of the exam process does that make sense yes okay okay i understand yeah, so you can ask, but at the end of the day, if you say, can you please clarify that further, it's it's kind of vague, then all they will do is they'll just repeat it. And so don't be surprised if they're like, you're like, what are you a robot? Why are you just repeating that? It's it's because of that reliability and validity, okay? Okay, okay. Okay, that was a good question. Yeah, all right. Yes. Thank you Thank you for clarifying it. It's, I, I, it's bugging me for a while now. Yeah, and it, and it does bother people because they do have some questions where it's kind of like, well, what are you asking me exactly, right? Like, where, where are you going yes. with that? It could be interpreted a little bit differently. Um, the people who make the IELTS exam, they do really try to come up with questions where 
it's fairly clear for the um, candidate what is being asked so it's it's you know it's not um, up to interpretation but it's like fairly direct so uh, don't the, my my tip here is don't overcomplicate it okay so just kind of go with it don't overcomplicate it okay okay all right thank you Cass those are those are great uh, question have a great day thank you thank you okay bye all right so that was a question from Cass that was really good all right let's see um, Hasna says, I want to volunteer. Um, Hasna, yeah, okay, if you have a question, you can ask me. I'm not sure if you're in the chat, but I know you're a member, so uh, let me see what's going on here. All right. Hi, Hasna. Hello. Hi, Hasna. Hello. How are you doing? Hello, sir. I can hear you I'm just fine. Good. How okay. are you, sir? I am. I'm good. Also, thank you for asking. Um, so, Hasna, did you have a question about IELTS or immigration or English? This no. is not. This is not a speaking class yet. So right now we're doing um, the question and answer class for oh. members. Um, the speaking class is going to be coming up uh, after this one. That's why I was kind of like, I don't think you're actually in the chat. You're not. You're kind of maybe semi following the class. Um, but uh, if you have a question about IELTS, something that's been kind of bothering you or you're curious about, now's a good chance to ask me. I have um, in speaking part. Um... I I tend to have a lot of pauses, mm -hmm. and I want to know how to avoid that. Okay, uh, that's a good question, right? Because you're worried about your fluency mark, I'm guessing. It depends on the pauses. So first of all, don't worry too much about pauses. That's kind of the unexpected answer that I'm going to give you because um, pauses in speech can be natural. So we as humans in our communication, we naturally pause to think about what we are going to say. And um, thinking before you speak is a really good strategy because speaking um, intelligently will get you higher band scores. You can often hear me pausing between my ideas as well. So don't stress too much about your pauses as long as you're not pausing to think about vocabulary or to think about grammar, it's okay. And the examiner will, will be able to um, uh, understand or will, will be able to discern, it means differentiate, um, between pauses that are for vocabulary or pauses that are for ideas, okay? Pauses for ideas, you don't lose marks. Uh, to avoid um, pausing for ideas, um, keep your ideas simple. Follow that answer, explain, example strategy. And um, to avoid pauses for vocabulary and grammar, of course, practice. You have to just practice, practice, practice. Um, speak as much as you can. And don't try to force vocabulary. So if you have a word that has come to mind, use it. Don't try to come up with like a fancy idiom or a fancy synonym. Uh, just use what comes to mind, okay? So that would be my tip for that. But otherwise, don't worry about your pauses, okay? Okay. All right, and it comes with practice. Um, there is, um, have you ever heard of uh, a club called Toastmasters? It's an international club. It's called Toastmasters. Yeah, I heard that before. Okay, I highly recommend checking that out because Toastmasters, you can practice your public speaking and they share a lot of really good ideas of how to speak uh, fluently. So uh, this is kind of for everybody. So check out. It's so absolutely free. It's a free club to join. It's international. They're very well known. Uh, check out Toastmasters. I believe it's one word like that. Um, just Google it, okay? And I'm sure you'll find one in your area. And then you can really practice to build your fluency and kind of decrease the pauses in your in your speaking, especially in a speech like the the cue card, okay? Okay. All right. Okay, uh, thank you so much, Hasna. And uh, if you want to practice your speaking, come back um, in a little bit for the next class in about uh, 30, uh, about an hour, um, and then we'll do speaking part one, okay? 
Okay. All right. I'm looking forward. Okay. okay. Bye, Hasna. Okay, so that was Hasna. Um, Baljeet, sorry I skipped you there, and I know that Baljeet had the next question, I believe, in the chat. Let me just kind of see here. This is what I'm looking at. Okay, so... Uh, yeah, so Baljeet, you had this question of, can I use my hands in speaking? So let, let, I'll let you ask me that verbally, and then... Um, and then I can give you a good answer for that. Hello. Hi, Baljeet. How are you, sir? I am doing fantastic. How are you? I'm also doing great, sir. Excellent. Uh, Baljeet, I, just really quickly, I did receive your speaking part two recording in my email, so I'll have a listen to that and I'll respond to it um, a little bit later today, okay? Okay, sir. Okay. All right, so uh, Baljeet, I saw in the chat that you had a good question. Do you want to ask me that question? Sir, uh, I want to know, can I use my hands and during my speaking? Yeah, it's a very common question, gestures, right? So using body language. I and use a lot of... <laughs> body language? Yeah, complete your yes, sentences. Yes. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, body language is fantastic. So uh, people often think that it's not polite or they shouldn't be doing that. Yes, it's sir. not true. Uh, body language is a natural part of our communication and it's an important part of our communication. So I always tell students that when you're in the IELTS speaking exam, uh, avoid fidgeting. Do you know what fidgeting means? Mm, like stuck on the chair? <laughs> uh, no, actually fidgeting, I think it's like this to fidget, it's a verb, it means to move nervously, okay? <laughs> um, so some people, they kind of tap their leg like a rabbit. They just, their leg bounces up and down, like bum, 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 bum. Or they move like this back and forth in their chair, like that, okay? okay. Um, if you're looking at me, then you can see <laughs> what I'm doing. So that's called yes. fidgeting, that, that kind of nervous movement, it's fidgeting. Or some people will tap their hand on the table right so that's fidgeting um, instead of fidgeting it's good to just use the hands to express your ideas uh, that will make you more confident so body language that's not fidgeting okay. um, improves confidence and emphasis okay uh, so when um, we use our hands to express ourselves that also has a strong connection with the way that our brain is working in our uh, speech production centers. I'm not going to get into too much psychology, but you have a part of your brain called the Wernicke's area that's uh, uh, used for uh, producing speech and uh, Broca's area that's for comprehending speech. But anyway, there's a strong connection between the motor cortex, so the part of the brain that's uh, responsible for, for producing movement um, with communication. And combining those two definitely leads to better communication. And you see that public speakers who are very good public speakers tend to have good body language uh, as well. So use it, kind of be, be the Italian. Italians really have very pronounced body language and uh, I always tell students, be the Italian, <laughs> use your body language, okay? Okay, okay. Um, can, I, can I ask one more question? <laughs> yeah, just before you do, I wanna give another important piece of advice there. Don't ever cross your arms like this in the speaking because that puts pressure on your chest and your breathing. So you want to keep an open body posture. Um, and don't put your hands under the table. Again, that, that kind of closes um, your body off. So keep an open body posture, keep your hands on the table, okay? Okay. okay. All right, go ahead, Baljeet, ask me another question. Uh, it is about uh, reading section, sir. So yeah. when I do uh, reading, uh, like uh, what, why, how, uh, it slows my speed, but it is uh, quite accurate. accurate. But when I do in uh, speed, like uh, in time, <laughs> then I mess up totally. Yeah, I mean, there's only a, a simple answer for that is you just have to keep practicing it. So um, the more you practice it, the faster that you will get at it. So using that critical thinking, what is this yes, paragraph uh, about? Why is the author asking this? How is the author supporting this information? You just get faster through practice. Um, if you're having difficulty 
um, with um, going through all three of those questions for each paragraph. So just to be clear for all of our viewers, Baljeet is asking about critical or active reading skills, um, which is asking what, why, how, uh, for the content of each passage in each paragraph, uh, then uh, what you can do, Balji, for your official test, if you're like, oh, I can't, I can't do this because I'm just not going to have enough time and I'm going to get too confused, then drop the how question and just stick with the what, why. So what is the author saying? Why is the author saying it? What is the author saying? Why? And forget the how and the how will, it will come when you need to check it, okay? Okay, so I do that uh, and I uh, do uh, it with the writing down all the questions and answers on paper. Yeah, yeah. When you're practicing at home, that's the way to do it. Yeah, you want to write it yeah. down and then check it. Absolutely. It's time taking, but it's an extremely effective way to improve your reading comprehension for sure. Yes, sir. Okay, Baljeet, thank you so much uh, for those valuable questions and that share. Um, and uh, we'll uh, talk to you later, okay? Thank you, sir. Okay, bye, Baljeet. Okay, so that was our member, Baljeet. Let me see if we have, okay, we have Tatiana here as well. Okay, let me reach out to Tatiana. Hello. Hi, Tatiana. Hello, Adrian. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good, thank you. How are you? Me too. Awesome. So, Tatiana, do you have a question for me? Yes, I have a question about uh, reading and listening sections. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been doing uh, them on IELTS online tests uh, mm -hmm. and site. And I noticed, and I, I uh, did just one uh, reading and just one listening during our streams. And I noticed that the ones I did previously on uh, the other site were much more difficult in comparison with uh, the test we did uh, on streams. I wanted, to, uh, I'd like to ask uh, what is the actual level of difficulty? Is uh, Are the tests uh, that are on iHelp uh, site, um, uh, do they imitate uh, the real difficulty? Do they imitate the real ones uh, on the exam? Yeah. Or, or are they easier, maybe? Very good question. That's not a very good question. Yeah. And so um, they're the same difficulty. Okay. So mm -hmm. we uh, when we when we designed the um, the tests and, and students who have used our website and then have taken the IELTS exam, they mm -hmm. often come back in the class when this question is asked and they say, no, it's it's the same difficulty. So um, for, and sometimes connected to this question, Tatiana, people ask us like, what materials should I use to get the same experience from our kind of history of doing IELTS and doing this for a while? Um, the Cambridge books, so the Cambridge IELTS exams, especially book seven to, I think it's now 16, 15, um, those are past IELTS exams and the most recent books, so Cambridge uh, 13, 14, 15, they're fairly recent exams that were conducted maybe two years ago, three years ago. Um, so the difficulty of the listening and the reading, um, it's kind of a set level, but within that, it also depends on your luck a little bit. Like if it's, uh, for example, topics that you're familiar with, like let's say that, you know, you work as a pharmacist and then you get a listening or a reading topic that's about uh, pharmaceuticals or medicine or biology, it's going to be, of course, a lot easier than if you get a topic that's about engineering, right? So they try to come up with topics that are going to be universal, but it's very difficult to always have that. Um, within that, uh, we do what's called test retest reliability on our exams. So when we produce these exams in-house, um, then uh, we do a lot of comparisons of uh, how students perform on those past Cambridge IELTS papers versus the exams that we're creating. And we always make sure to adjust it so that a student who scores, let's say, an average of 30 from 40 on the listening or the reading for uh, Cambridge past exam would also score roughly 30 out of 40 for our exams as well. So the difficulty is very, very similar. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's it's what you can know. accept. Thank you. Yeah, but we have gotten comments from both sides. So we've gotten comments from students where some students say, oh, I found my IELTS was more difficult. And then some students that have said, oh, I found my IELTS easier. Why are the ones on your website more difficult? And that actually gives us the assurance that we have it right. So it's somewhere in the middle and that's where it should be. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Because I was frustrated while doing those tests on IELTS online test.com. Yeah, you shouldn't be. Um, the uh, online IELTS test, actually, you have to be really careful uh -huh. with. That's another tip that I want to give you. Um, I've seen some um, uh -huh. IELTS tests on British Council as well, like sample questions, uh -huh. and they don't represent the same difficulty as oh. the real exam. So you have to be careful. Even some sources that seem like they should be, like British Council, and I'm kind of careful with my word choice here because I don't want to make them angry, but I will tell them this honestly as well, is that the practice mm -hmm. questions, that the sample questions they show students on their website, I think they're significantly easier than um, the actual IELTS test. And um, some uh, practice materials out there like Barron's IELTS, which is a big uh, producer of IELTS uh, practice materials that you can find almost anywhere in the world. It's called Barron's IELTS. They're like... 30% easier than the actual IELTS exam. So you do have to be, you do have to be careful with what you're choosing to study from. Um, Longman's study materials sometimes don't look at all like the real exam. So they'll have task one examples for academic that don't look anything like task one um, in the real test. So you have to be, you have to be careful for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Okay, Tatiana, thank you for your question. Have a lovely day. Thank you. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye. Okay, so that was a question from Tatiana. Okay, let's have one more question here. All right. Um, here we have Nutan, our member. Let's see if I can catch Nutan. Hello, sir. Hi, Nutan. How are you? I'm very good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing pretty good. Yeah, I'm doing. I'm nice yeah. Too. Weekend is ahead of me as well, so uh, I've got some plans. I'm gonna go skiing uh, on uh, Monday, wow. so I'm looking forward to that. Um, Nitan, how can I help you? Do you have a question? Yes, I have two questions. One with the IELTS and one with gender. Mm -hmm. So, but that is also respected with the IELTS itself. Okay, so the one first question is with the writing part. So like uh, yesterday we are writing and uh, you advised us to have the quantity of our answer within like 250 words or uh, 300 words to mm -hmm. get a high band. But other than the quantity of words, what would be the other uh, criteria would be uh, checked while uh, giving us a band in writing? Okay, so uh, there's quite a few different elements that they look at um, when they're looking at your writing. Um, if you look up um, on the internet, um, official, uh, here, so just Google this when you have a moment, then you can get a nice PDF from IELTS.org that tells you the exact uh, criteria. Okay, so um, IELTS writing uh, section marking uh, criteria. So just type that into uh, Google and then you'll be able to download that PDF. Uh, the same for speaking. So if you type in speaking section marking criteria, look for the official IELTS dot. Um, so look for the official one, okay? So sure. You'll see it, they kind of just break it down. So, but to give you an answer, a more specific answer. So when they look at your writing, uh, first of all, they're marking uh, for your coherence. Uh, both in the speaking and in the writing, the number one factor that determines your score, your overall band score, is your coherence. Basically, okay. can, can I understand what you are writing and is it answering the question that you are asked? That's the first, okay, that's the first and most important point to pay attention to. So that's what they're checking for. And then within that, then they're going to che uh, check for grammatical range and accuracy, just like in uh, speaking. They're going to uh, check for uh, lexical resource. So how well you're using vocabulary, are you able to use synonyms, or are you repeating uh, the same word? 
they're looking for task completion. So beyond the coherence, what they look for is what's called task completion. And that's where it's a little bit tricky, but the, the marker is thinking, okay, uh, how well has this candidate answered this question? So how much detail have they gone into? Have they really given a complete answer or does the marker, does the examiner have to add a lot of their own information to make it kind of a complete piece of information? So is there a clear introduction? Are there clear body paragraphs? Is there a good conclusion? So they're looking um, for that, that task completion. And that's where you need that at least 250 words, because if you don't have that, then immediately it's an incomplete task. Okay. If you have over 250 words, then it's a complete task, but it's still not necessarily a band nine complete task. That's why it's usually you need another 50, 60 words. Okay. Yeah, sure. All right. But again, if you want to see the exact details, like it's, there's a lot of little details of what is a band eight, what is a band seven, then type yeah. in this IELTS writing section marking criteria and you'll get that full PDF um, a sheet. Okay. Okay. So sure. All right. Yeah. And one, uh, one, mm -hmm. Yeah, another question, it's a general IELTS exam environment I want to ask, like uh, this is the first time I'm uh, just listening with the IELTS and I don't know exactly how that uh, uh, listening and the writing and the reading part conducted, like we know speaking it's like an interview, like uh, we have seen your streams and mm -hmm. we are going through everything, but, uh, but what about the writing, listening and the uh, reading part conducted so it's like individual or it's like exam all uh, who sit everyone has uh, who are at the same room so how does yeah. conducted? yeah so okay so how does that work right so there's two versions as you probably know there's the computer based version and there's the yeah. paper there's the paper based version okay so yes. um, in the computer based version yeah you're in one big room okay and yeah, okay. in the computer based version uh, you have stations. So you have these computer stations and between each station there's a divider. So there will be like, um, like when I did the official exam in Budapest back in uh, February, um, there were about 30 people in the room and okay. it was four or five rows of um, computers, uh, one row facing the wall, one row facing the center, kind of so one row is facing away from the other row. And then each row has maybe seven or eight candidates. We're all kind of separated by this little wall. And then when the exam starts, there's um, an invigilator who stands at the front of the room. They read the instructions. And then a lot of it happens automated with headset and the computer software and you do the um, listening, then the uh, reading, then the writing. And it's a very kind of an automated system that takes about almost three hours. The paper based exam, <clears throat> sorry, is very similar. So it happens in a very similar way, except instead of a computer, you have a question booklet and an answer booklet. And then the um, invigilator is giving a little bit more instructions that some of them that you would hear on the headset through the computer instead. So that's how it works. And you go in there and then you sit the whole time and you do the exam and you can go to the washroom, but not at any time. Okay. okay, so this is an important and interesting point here that you know that a lot of people might not know is um, your washroom breaks. You have to be very strategic with your washroom break. And if possible, I'm kind of worried to say this, but you want to try to avoid going to the washroom. So don't drink too much water. Definitely don't drink a ton of coffee. Um, I went to the washroom in my exam and it cost me like five minutes because I had to take an elevator and uh, I couldn't I didn't have time to really check my writing which cost me some marks and I wish that didn't happen but uh, maybe that was just my bad luck uh, they should have a washroom close by but that's not always the case like in my case um, so and you can't go like in the last 10 minutes of the reading or uh, in the listening you can't go to the washroom at all okay so no washroom breaks in the listening that's why it's first and then the reading in the last 10 minutes and the writing in the last 10 minutes, you cannot go to the washroom. Okay, so keep that in mind. All right? Okay, okay, fine, sir. <laughs> All right, sure. okay. Yeah. All right, thank you for uh, the questions and um, I will uh, see you in class, with I'll make sure to hang around sure, for sir. speaking, okay? Sure, sir, thank you. All right, thanks for those thanks questions, for your bye. Answer. bye. 
Okay, so those were some questions from uh, Nutan. Um, students, I'm going to stop with the question and answer session there for now, uh, but worry not. Again, if you have more questions, you can always send me an email to adrian at aehelp.com. Uh, like I say, we've been in the IELTS game for well over 10 years. Uh, we've seen the IELTS exam even transform a little bit over those uh, 10 years. We are world leaders when it comes to IELTS exam preparation. So check us out at aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gltshelp.com for general IELTS. Uh, we were just using those websites as you saw. Um, and uh, make sure to click the uh, red button right there to join our premium package. It's a one-time payment for lifetime access. General IELTS green background. Click that red button. Uh, thank you so much, members. Thank you for your questions. Um, Kyber, Cass, Uche, Jyoti, Baljeet. It was fantastic having you with me in this class and hopefully you'll hang around for the next one, which will be um, speaking, our speaking part one class where we're we will practice speaking questions uh, in just the same way that we did the, this uh, question and answer session. So that's uh, fantastic. See you soon, everyone. I'm Adrian. I'm signing out from Victoria for now, but I'll be back shortly. Bye.